Hi, welcome all to the Curiosity, the science show, which we are bringing from the YAI, the Young Academy of India, the cutting edge of the science and technology. And this is the May episode of 2021. Uh, you know, the, the, this is the episode number 20. So we are covering across the disciplines, including psychology and behavior, humanities, politics and policies, technology, biodiversity, environment and evolution, and medicine and diagnostics. Plus, of course, we are covering uh, you know the portion days and observances you know what is actually upcoming in this month of uh, may so please stay tuned so the first is uh, of course uh, with the psychology and behavior right the stories of the psychology and behavior so for the first time the researchers show that verses in the religious scriptures that legitimize the violence may increase the support for the killing of the enemies of the faith based on the new study of christians muslims and jews in seven countries using the quote from the bible quran or torah so yeah so this is the problem the uh, the, the, the legitimization of violence in holy books uh, one of the main reasons for the war and the conflicts all around the world. So this is the, for the first time that the, the scientific study have revealed a clear cut association of this. You know, so something we have to think about for the future of humanity concerned. So people who used Facebook as an additional source of news in any way were less likely to answer the COVID-19 questions correctly than those who did not. So this is with a, a large number study with 5,000, more than 5,000 cohorts. So, uh, you know, of course, the COVID-19 knowledge is correlated with the trusted news source. So in case you are wondering which news source to trust, I've covered that in, uh, you know, in this uh, YouTube. So you can check out my previous YouTube video. So I have actually clearly mentioned about the Internet, which source to be trusted and which source not to be trusted in the Internet. And of course, as a rule of thumb, Please do not trust any news that you come across through social media and WhatsApp, you know, uh, or Instagram or Twitter. All these things are not reliable. You have to check out the source and who is revealing these matters. And even established professors completely err and completely propagates this uh, pseudoscience. So beware of all this uh, myth and uh, conspiracy theories. Two thirds of the New Zealanders believe that there is a silver lining to the country's COVID-19 lockdown last year. Positive experiences such as pride in the country's response, more free time to exercise and take up hobbies, flexibility working from home, and reduced time spent commuting. All these are positive attributes uh, with the, the lockdown, you see. So that positive attributes are really important to get rid of the psychological stress associated with the lockdown, the mental fatigue, you know. So the, by the way, the silver lining uh, means uh, the, the ray of hope, you know. This is like when you see the, the cloud, uh, uh, you know, the ray coming back from the cloud. So that is actually the ray of hope. As you know, the, the New Zealand's response was amazing. You know, the country responded quite well uh, and the decision were completely based on science. Uh, for example masking and uh, social distancing and because of these two practices that they implemented early on uh, you know paid huge uh, dividends uh, now that the country is almost out of this uh, uh, COVID-92 and such laudable effort were taken by the Israel as well now the Israel is also uh, kind of getting out of the COVID-19 situation yet another very interesting study is about boredom and its connection with the sleep you know, so boredom affects sleep quality. So boredom proneness predicted in inattention associated with the bedtime procrastination and subsequent poor sleep quality. Fidgeting and mind wanderings were associated with the poor sleep uh, via bedtime procrastination, which has implications to dealing the bedtime procrastination. So, you know, if you are bored, you should really fight your boredom. Uh, you know, maybe that is the reason why your sleep quality is uh, not good. So having a responsive supportive partner minimizes the negative impact of the individual's depression or external stress on their romantic relationship. So the partner plays a huge role on stress maintenance, you know. So a responsive partner is the one who focuses effort and energy to listen without reacting, you know. So be a good listener if you want to improve your partnership with your romantic partner. That's really important and tries to understand and be supportive in a helpful way. So that is what the new research says. Now coming to humanities, politics and policies related stories, religion coming again back to the religion. Religion is a driving force behind the gender wage gap, suggests a new study. 
So the findings provide evidence that the men tend to earn significantly more than women in societies with heightened religiosity based on the analysis from 140 countries and 50 US states. So those countries with extremely high religiosity like uh, Turkey for example, men earn significantly higher than women. So this gender gap is exacerbated by uh, faith, you know, a, a religion. So some companies may hire unethical bosses on purpose, you know, so that's really interesting. They they want to hire uh, people with the, the you know, the, the bad triad, you know, so the dark triad personality, uh, questionable ethical standards, narcissistic tendencies that make the boss bad may also make the person much more likely to go along with manipulating the earnings and maybe the reason that they got the job in the first place. So the companies want to manipulate their earnings, evade the tax, you know, so do a lot of unethical practices for that. Uh, maybe the employees who are uh, having this uh, dark threat personality like narcissism or psychopathy, you know, so are more preferable. Very interesting study, isn't it? So that is really alarming indeed, you know. So rising income inequality is not an in inevitable outcome of the technological progress, but rather the result of the policy decisions to weaken the unions and dismantle the social safety nets. That is what the new study suggests of 14 high income countries, including Australia, France, Germany, Japan, UK and US. So many of the established, uh, you know, the brands like Amazon and even Google recently are taking policies to uh, you know to silence the trade unions so by the way the trade unions are really important today today is um, uh, may day the first of may you know uh, international day for the workers right labor day uh, labor day is different but this is basically it's also connected to the labor right so the worker uh, rights and union rights are really important this is a picture from haymarket affair way back in 1886 in the us in chicago you know so that is uh, if you can read more about may 1st you will understand what the significance of the may 1st and why it is uh, the may day uh, is a lab you know the uh, celebration of the the unions and uh, yeah so you know the class struggle yes so coming to the biodiversity environment and evolution uh, related news fallout from the nuclear bomb test in early 1950s see it's almost seven decades back and 60s showing up in the u.s honey friends very interesting according to the new study the findings reveal that thousands of kilometers from the nearest bomb site and more than 50 years after the bomb fell radioactive fallout is still cycling through the plants and animals so that is really alarming when it comes to the nuclear test like Pokhran or any uh, places you know that we actually do this nuclear test to uh, to show off our uh, you know mighty warfare right so that is actually paying huge heed on the biodiversity that is what this new study says so that is really alarming and by the way the honey matters because uh, yeah the bee populations are shrinking rapidly all around the world and may 20th is also a special day it's a bee day you know international bee day so i'll come to it in a short while Roundup is a commercial, you know, herbicide. It's a glyphosate based uh, herbicide. Causes high levels of the mortality following contact exposure in bumblebees. Uh, you know, and bees exhibited 94 percentage mortality with Roundup Ready. Uh, it's basically ready to use uh, 30, uh, herbicide. 30 percentage mortality with Roundup Proactive. So Roundup products caused a comprehensive matting of the bee body hair causing death by incapacitating the gas exchange system. So we now know that uh, the molecular mode of action of this uh, herbicide on the bee. So it's really uh, important to curtail the use of the herbicide. So we, have, we can go with the biological control or many other manner. And this is very interesting that the study, uh, many people actually compare the uh, other glyphosate uh, you know, herbicides and they found that the other other brands are significantly less uh, uh, causing less damage to the bumblebee rather than uh, this uh, you know this particular roundup so there is some ingredient in roundup is causing the problem with the uh, the bee so it's a time to stop using the roundup altogether uh, the other brands are also glyphosate based so it is not really glyphosate uh, you know uh, causing the problem so there is some unknown ingredient in this roundup so 
Very interesting. Single-use plastics dominate the debris on the North Pacific's deep ocean floor. Scientists have discovered that you know the densest accumulation of the plastic waste ever recorded on the abyssal sea floor. Abyssal floor is uh, you know it's a pitch dark sea floor. 4,561 times uh, you know uh, items per the square kilometer. So in one square kilometer they found uh, approximately 4.5 uh, thousand you know items the the, the plastics single-use plastics so uh, it's uh, it's an important finding that the majority of the waste is single-use packaging so we really have to curtail the single-use packaging because all, almost all of it end up in the ocean floor causing devastation in the ocean biodiversity so with impressive accuracy docs can sniff out the covid you know the causative agent of covid 19 the coronavirus so a proof of concept study suggests that specially trained detection dogs can sniff out COVID-19 positive samples with 96% accuracy. Eight Labrador retrievers and one Belgian Malinois uh, that had not done the medical detection work before were used. So very interesting Labrador can actually detect the COVID-19. So it is uh, something really uh, interesting, you know, it's a uh, evolution inspired or animal behavior inspired uh, detection tool for COVID-19 so we maybe we can make use of these dogs sniffing dogs sniffers uh, for uh, you know decreasing cost of COVID-19 well anyway it's a proof of concept only the mystery of the blue flower nature's rare color offs its existence to the bee vision why is that the humans are also fond of blue and why does it seem so rare in the world of plants and animals so you know the uh, the answers are getting apparent answer is that our own uh, you know the visible sensitivity uh, has something to do with the blue color so we are not really naturally prone for the blue right uh, I mean our sensitivity is pretty low for the blue uh, in in the electromagnetic spectra and for the bees they are attracted to the blue flower you know so if uh, uh, if it's blue uh, if you ever see any blue flower you know so chances are high that the pollinators are bees uh, you know and these flowers and these plants are uh, really on the verge of extinction in the case if the bee population shrinks rapidly as we can see all over the world right now so evidence linking the pregnant women's exposure to phthalates found in the plastic packaging and common consumer products to altered cognitive outcomes and slower information processing in their infants and males are more likely to be affected so it's really alarming study so in this channel in this youtube channel i have actually featured this problem again and again the plastic uh, you know so if you use the plastic packaging material for the food uh, this is or plastic lunch box so this is going to be a big problem because phthalates of the plastic as well as bp and bps you know gets leached into the food so that is a big problem so i've covered this please check it out those videos so now that phthalates can cause a cognitive impairment especially in male children you know uh, so stop using plastic uh, touched food if you are pregnant especially or lactating women right so researchers pinpoint single toxic chemicals in tires as cause of the mass salmon mortality that's really exciting. I'm so, so, so excited to read this story. How could they actually see that? It's actually causing this from the tire, you know, the, the tire that uh, the automobile, the cars use it. And when it rains, you know, the tire actually gets leached out. The one chemical gets leached out into the, the rain drops and this gets into the stream and cause uh, the mortality in the salmon. Exciting, isn't it? The curiosity driven research. And the chemical is 6-PPD-quinone. So this particular chemical which is used in uh, the tires are causing, uh, you know, the mortality in the salmon population. So the companies should curtail the use of this particular or completely phase it out. Look for alternatives. So by analyzing 25 years of the US data, researchers found toxicity of the pesticides to non-target invertebrates, including pollinators, has increased markedly, even though volume used has gone down. So this challenges the common assumption that the impacts of the environmental pesticides have gone down over the time. No, it hasn't gone down. So, you know, the non-target invertebrates have significantly increased over the past 25 years. So that is really alarming, you know. Nothing is improving for the last 25 years. That's really something to be 
uh, you know to be concerned about climate change is driving some you know some to skip having kids so you know climate change is actually leading to uh, population decline that's you know again that is uh, causing one of the aftermaths of the climate change so a new study finds that the overconsumption overpopulation and uncertainty about the future are among the top concerns of those who say that climate change is affecting their reproductive decision making you know so couples are more and more likely to say that they don't want to have kids uh, in lights of dooming, uh, you know, uh, prospects of the world in light of the climate change. So, I mean, it's wrecking havoc on all spheres of human life, friends. Climate change is really, you know, something we have to be concerned about. We have to fight. Climate action is important. Uh, scientists discover a bacteria that transforms waste from the copper mining into the pure copper, providing an inexpensive and environmentally friendly way to synthesize it. And clean up the pollution and it's the first reported to produce a single atom metal but researchers suspect many more await the discovery it's exciting isn't it many bacteria and other uh, living forms are yet to be discovered and you know uh, it uh, uh, potentially harbors uh, lots of bio prospecting avenues like this particular bacteria that can leach out the copper from the mine waste so you know it's like one shot two birds so you are actually uh, getting out of the waste, the pollutants, you know, it's a bioremediation. Plus you are getting the, the pure cop copper, you know, the atomic copper. So you can actually get the copper out of this mine uh, by using this bacteria. Very interesting. Big meat and dairy companies have spent millions lobbying against the climate action. That is what a new study suggests. Well, I'm not really surprised. Many uh, big corporations does it, especially oil. You know, the petrochemical corporations lobby uh, for, you know, uh, for uh, spend, uh, uh, you know, uh, to silence the uh, environmentally friendly uh, like e-car, you know, uh, sectors as well, uh, the, the tobacco company also. Tobacco companies actually spend millions uh, to suppress the, the finding that uh, links the tobacco consumption lead to the cancer, you know. So these are uh, daylight lies. Coming next is medicine and diagnostics. Scientists find that new evidence linking essential oils to seizures. So this is a landmark publication that published in last year, uh, last month, you know, in, in, in the April. So if you ever use this essential oil like eucalyptus oil or, or you know, the tree oil, you know, or lime, lime oil or lime grass oil. So think twice because it has been uh, the association is very clear it can lead to seizures you know epilepsy like seizures the fitness so analyzing 350 seizure cases researchers found that 15.7 percentage of the seizures may have been induced by the inhalation ingestion or topical use of the essential oils after stopping use of oils a vast majority did not experience another seizure and the fake news is coming that the camphor, uh, if you burn the camphor, uh, you know, in your closed surrounding, then the oxygen is increased in lights of the oxygen shortage in here in India, you know, the COVID-19 situation is getting worse. No, uh, camphor is also an essential oil, see the camphor oil, so it can lead to seizure, friends. Please stop doing uh, or trusting this, uh, you know, the pseudoscience sources. So, of course, camphor has been used for centuries or millennia to induce the seizures you know so or uh, psychopathic substance right psychomodulatory substance so uh, yeah it's time to rethink our habits in light of this new evidence about this uh, uh, you know the essential oils people with early onset dementia are often mistaken for having depression and now the research has discovered the cause a profound loss of ability to experience pleasure uh, so it's related to the degeneration of hedonistic or hedonic hotspots in the brain where the pleasure mechanisms are con you know concentrated so if you have problems uh, perceiving the pleasure then chances are high that you might be on the verge of experiencing dementia so get tested and take adequate precautions so yeah that's really interesting study Adding cocoa powder to the diet of obese mice resulted in 21% lower rate of weight gain and less inflammation than, uh, you know, high fat fed control mice. 
So cocoa fed mice had 28% less fat in their livers, 56% lower levels of oxidative stress and 75% lower levels of the DNA damage in the liver compared to the control. So if you have this uh, fatty liver disease or you know so maybe cocoa is a very interesting ingredient that you can think of you can consider in, you know adding into your life and also of course if you want to uh, diet if you want to get rid of the extra fat in your body cocoa might pave away well who knows this experiment is not done on human but it's on mice but still uh, you know the association is getting really clear Physical inactivity is associated with uh, a, a higher risk of severe COVID-19 outcomes. A study in 48,440 adult patients. So sedentary lifestyle is associated with severe COVID-19 and mortality, right? So if you're having a sedentary lifestyle, you should take extra precautions, you know? And of course you can exercise, slowly you start exercising. Uh, of course, that is part of, uh, uh, you know, the uh, overall, uh, health and fitness uh, right motto so when your immune system fights an infection it cranks up the mutation rate during antibody production by a factor of uh, you know uh, 1 million and then has them compete with each other this natural selection process creates highly specific antibodies for the virus so this is a very interesting uh, it's not a new one but I learned it recently so, you know it's a, it's an old finding but yeah very exciting you know so histocompatibility complex for example and how the body can actually synthesize its own antibodies against the virus because of this extreme mutation rates in our system by the way there are a lot of hawks spreading that uh, you know the vaccines are causing the virus to mutate no it doesn't happen that way so mutations are completely random and even its selection uh, you know that is that doesn't actually uh, happen because of the vaccination no so uh, we can compare that with the measles or polio virus vaccine. So it has completely eliminated the polio virus, isn't it? The polio virus did not mutate to get rid of this vaccine, polio uh, vaccine. So these kind of uh, fake news are everywhere, friends. So please don't trust this uh, conspiracy theories and hawks and fake news. Exercise and a healthy diet in childhood leads to adults with bigger brains and lower levels of anxiety. According to a new research in the mice, first study to examine the long lasting combined effects of both factors when they are experienced in early life. So early childhood exercise is really important. So if you're a pa parent, if you're parenting, then yes, uh, you know, exercise of your kids that can pay huge reward you know huge dividends in uh, later on in their lives so it's really interesting study a new study suggests that a mask ha and a good ventilation system are more important than social distancing for reducing airborne spread of covid-19 in classrooms so if you are an academician if you're a teacher then yeah this is really important rather than social dis of course social distancing is also important physical distancing rather uh, you know the masking uh, insisting that or mandating that your wards wear masks in the class and also the ventilation you know so uh, ensuring adequate ventilation so if you are not really uh, know how this uh, AC works or is it a centralized AC it's better to open up the windows to have adequate uh, airflow the natural ventilation is much better you know so these are more important for curtailing the COVID-19 than simple physical distance in the class because it is a uh, indoor space any kind of physical distancing doesn't actually work in indoor spaces you see it's because it's an airborne disease sunlight inactivates a coronavirus eight times faster than predicted so study found that SARS-CoV-2 virus was three times more sensitive to the UV in sunlight than influenza A with 90 percentage coronavirus particles being inactivated after just hour of uh, you know uh, half an hour of the exposure to the midday sunlight in the summer so it's really interesting that the sunlight can inactivate uh, the covid night so it is important for the fomite you know so if you are uh, on a workplace for example uh, i mean you can just open up the the blinds you know so that natural uv rays can come in and it can sterilize uh, the, the the surfaces at least you know so that's really interesting 
Researchers come one step closer to the insulin in a pill. As of now, the insulin is injectable. You know, you, are, you have to inject the, the insulin. Now it's a pill-like form. So it's a nanotechnology inspired uh, design. So it's really interesting. So uh, to eliminate the need of the self-injection, successfully testing in, it's in a diabetic rats using a nanomaterial layers to package the insulin so that the hormone can be taken orally without being destroyed by the stomach acid. So really exciting, isn't it? By the way, this year is 150th anniversary of the discovery of the insulin, you know. A large longitudinal study in the Canada has unequivocally refuted the idea that epidural anesthesia increases the risk of autism in the children. So again, that is a hoax spreading. Epidural means on the spine, you know. So it actually uh, during the labor process, uh, you know, in the pregnancy, in the labor, you know, the childbirth. So, uh, you know, the epidural anesthesia doesn't impact, it doesn't, it's not a general anesthesia, but it, you know, the, the, uh, the mothers can squeeze in, uh, you know, to get the baby out, right? So in the epidural, so people were concerned that this anesthesia may cause autism, like vaccine autism, <laughs> fake news. No, it doesn't. That is what this new study in the Canada says. Very interesting. Coming to the technology. Uh, we are featuring only one story, a significant study in the last month. New research has found that vertical turbine design like this. So on the right side, you can see that this is a, uh, instead of the horizontal one, it's a vertical turbine. This kind of wind, you know, uh, the wind uh, turbine design, windmill design is far more efficient than the traditional turbines. Or, you know, in the large scale wind farms and when set in pairs, the vertical turbines increase each other's performance by 15 percentage. So vertical axis wind farm turbines can ultimately lower the prices of the electricity. It's very interesting. You know, it's a new design. Uh, the vertical, I've never seen this kind of uh, turbine in my life. So yeah, uh, that is what the technology, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's all about optimization, isn't it? Uh, to get the best energy with the least, uh, you know, the, the economic uh, capital, right? So that's really exciting piece of information. Coming to the news first is COVID-19 treatment and vaccine updates. Nothing new from the last month. So we have five candidates at the phase three clinical trials for the treatment. We have one approved drug also, Remdesivir is only a FDA approved uh, drug. Of course, there's a severe shortage of Remdesivir all over the world, isn't it? Because of the... Uh, multiple waves of COVID-19 uh, and vaccine also is not much of the updates in the last month uh, we have five candidates at phase three clinical trial and four candidates at phase two clinical trial all these are clinical trial there is nothing uh, you know completely approved friends uh, these are still we are learning about the efficiency of these vaccines you know so get vaccine if you haven't done yet so now in here in India, you know, if you are about 18 years, everybody can get vaccine. You can register in COVID portal and get yourself a jab, you know, very important. And with the vaccine, uh, yeah, a lot of fake news about the vaccine also, you know, of course, so we, we in, uh, in inside COVID are busting the fake news. So this is uh, one of the very interesting post. Uh, uh, yeah, uh, over the Facebook, which I came across to bust the fake news about the vaccine. Uh, yes, it's true. Blood clots after the vaccine, especially the, you know, the AstraZeneca vaccine is one in 660,000. So the chance it's in, you know, the probability and chance matters in sciences, isn't it? And dying of lightning strike is one in 138,000. See, chance of uh, dying in the random lightning strike is much higher than chance of having a blood clot uh, after this AstraZeneca. So, uh, you know, those kind of uh, stories that you find in the Facebook and WhatsApp that don't get this uh, AstraZeneca shot uh, that is COVID shield here in India because there is a high risk of blood clot. All these are nonsense, friends. Don't trust these uh, media sources. Alarming news from the last month is air pollution cost India 7 lakh crore a year. That is what the report says. 7 lakh crore. Oh my God, I cannot even imagine how much is this money because of the air pollution, especially agriculture, stubble burning. You know, that happens year after year in the north uh, India around the Diwali season. This stubble burning, you know, last month we have even featured it. The micro particle, the dust particle of the Indian uh, stubble burnings actually takes an intercontinental flight and it has been even detected in Finland, you know, inside the Arctic Circle. 
very interesting piece and it's really alarming and it actually uh, is one of the major culprit of this our GDP the slowing down the Indian GDP and another very interesting study from the last month is uh, it's a BBC report of course it has been reporting many news channels muons strong evidence found for a new force of nature uh, you know as of now we have four forces of nature fundamental forces you know uh, these are gravitational forces electromagnetic forces strong forces and weak forces and now we have very interesting uh, kind of strong evidence which is not yet completely uh, you know proven there is no scientific consensus muons could be uh, one of these uh, you know the, the fifth force so muon itself is a particle as you can see that high energy proton when it actually uh, falls onto the carbon or beryllium nuclei uh, can uh, you know can eject a pion neutrino and a muon so that particle is a muon and uh, you know there are actually a group of uh, quantum physicists are arguing muon could be a, a, a fundamental force of nature too so this has been uh, it's a work done in Fermi lab in Chicago in the US you know so very interesting so it, it can completely change the way that we see that uh, you know the, the physics right? especially the particle physics another exciting piece of information from the the news from the last month which, which is actually uh, you might have seen that this week's episode uh, this month's episode of the curiosity also start with this uh, image Scientists have spotted the largest flare ever recorded from the sun's nearest neighbor, the star Proxima Centauri. Proxima itself means near. Centauri is, uh, uh, you know, it's because of the constellation in which this star is located in. The star went from normal to 14,000 times brighter when seen in ultraviolet wavelength over the span of a few seconds. I'm really excited. In just a span of a few seconds, this kind of... Uh, uh, you know the uh, uh, flare can even be captured in our ever vigilant telescope systems you know very very exciting friends the science is amazing it's highly curiosity driven and I love science because of this fact by the way Proxima Centauri is really the nearest star you know the, the uh, it's really near it's the, the nearest star you know it's only about 4.2 light years away 4.2 light years so the distance, you know, that means the 4.2 years it takes for the light to reach the the uh, the Earth, you know. And also Proxima Centauri is very ex interesting because it has got two exoplanets, uh, Proxima Centauri A and Proxima Centauri B. And these are really Earth-like habitable zones. So this flare is not a good news for uh, ET hunters, extraterrestrial life, uh, you know. So people were believing that these exoplanets might harbor the life. But it, even if it has so, this glare might have completely wiped it out. Another very interesting news is that one of the smallest black holes and the closest to the Earth so far discovered. Scientists call it as a unicorn, this uh, no, portrait in this picture, the smallest black hole. So it is in the constellation Monoceros, 1500 light years away. So it's really, really far away, you know, the, the black hole. So still our super sensitive telescopes were able to detect it very interesting isn't it coming to unicorns so we have a very good piece of news uh, from last month rhino numbers on the rise 16 percentage increase in nepal's rhino numbers exciting isn't it and good news from the us too the bidden is actually doing a lot of science centered uh, democratic policy decisions you know uh, last month we we featured the how the bidden is uh, doing the climate action uh, by signing back in the paris accord and this month we see that uh, it's a nature nature is a british uh, a science magazine you know uh, the news uh, says bidden pursues giant boost for science spending so as you can see 8.7 billion budget for the cdc the centers for disease control uh, that is the largest uh, budget increase 23 percentage in the nearly two decades so amazing and also 25 percentage increase for NOAA that is na uh, no national ocean and atmospheric organization 21 percentage for the NIH national of health 20 percent for NSF national science foundation 6.3 percentage for the space and 10 percentage for the energy that's really interesting and by the way as we will see in this episode of the curiosity NIH because of the uh, you know the uh, huge budget increase there are a lot of opportunities for the students you can try it out uh, you know uh, we will see that in a short while 
Another interesting uh, curiosity driven research is that plant was the fungus creates fake fragrant flowers to fool the bees. So you can see that it's a fusarium is a fungus, uh, you know, that hijacks the yellow eyed cyrus grasses. So this is a grass, uh, cyrus grass, yellow eyed flowers. And it actually forms the flower like pattern on the flower uh, to increase the attraction and to lure the bees and the bees will come and the bees will get infected with this fusarium fungus and the bees collapse the population collapse so uh, i don't know why everything even the nature is against bees these days that's really terrific you know uh, especially for uh, the, the bee population is shrinking all over the world 20th of May. I'm looking forward to, to celebrate the International Bee Day. It's a UN International Day. Another very interesting news uh, appeared in the last month is the meat very fast death factor. The algal toxin scientists are finding out in the air. You know, the uh, it's a cyanobacterial toxin, cyanotoxin called ATX. You know, so anatoxin A that is called ATX. So because of the cyanobacterial bloom, this toxin gets out. And especially uh, after this, after the bloom, you know, uh, this gets degraded and that results in anoxia, you know, the oxygen gets reduced in the, uh, in the ecosystem that cause further damage to the ecosystem, fine. But during the process of the degradation of these uh, cyanobacteria, these toxins get released into the atmosphere. And this air, if you uh, breathe in, so it causes you know it's a lethal for human beings too it's something called very fast death factor uh, you know it's very terrific sounding uh, death factor you know uh, yeah that is that is the news from the last month uh, another very exciting news is that malaria vaccine hailed as potential breakthrough a lot of news about covid 19 vaccine of course that is very important but also yes malaria is really important and only last month i came to know that uh, you know it, on earth till date uh, you know 109 billion human beings have ever lived on the planet earth friends right now it is around 6 billion isn't it 6 or 7 billion uh, human beings are on the planet but if you look in past from 300,000 years till today uh, all over the world uh, till date 109 billion human beings lived and guess what half of them died of malaria Yes, yeah, so malaria is a very important disease. Uh, you know, we really have to tackle it. And uh, uh, this vaccine is manufactured here in India. You know, it's basically SII, the same institute in Pune that is manufacturing the Covishield. Uh, Serum Institute of India is in this business for a really long time. A very respected organization indeed. And uh, this SII uh, partnered with the Novavax. You know, it's a, a private company. Uh, Novavax provide the adjunct for the, uh, you know, adjunct to create the immune response and uh, the SII created this vaccine. So, you know, and they did this trial, human trials in Burkina Faso, that is a sub-Saharan country in Africa, you know. And they reported 77% efficacy of this vaccine to curtail or prevent uh, the spread of malaria exciting I'm really happy to read this story you know and uh, WHO has a cutoff value of 75 percentage so if the vaccine is more than 75 percentage efficient then WHO started recommending it so this is a very exciting piece of information and I'm really proud that SII doing fantastic on global uh, pandemics you know malarial prevention so malaria is also very important here in India you know and this is also very interesting, uh, you know, of course, this is an animation, you can see that very, uh, you know, if you look at this image carefully, it's a helicopter. And guess what? This is helicopter flying on Mars. You know, this is called Ingenuity. The first helicopter flight, the maiden flight happened on 19th April. Uh, it's a curiosity filled friends. Science is exciting. We are making uh, leaps and bounds of technological advancement in this space age, the 21st century. And <laughs> the century is not for the pseudoscience friends. This is for the real friends. By the way, this Ingenuity helicopter hitchhiked on Perseverance rover that has landed on the Mars recently, you know, the last month. And it is solar powered. Guess what? No fossil fuel. It's completely solar powered. Friends, exciting, isn't it? And another news about this Mars is that, uh, yeah, this planet is the, the, the red planet Mars. Perseverance rover just made oxygen on the Mars. 
very interesting they made an oxygen of course it's part of their chemical analysis and how the oxygen reacts with the martian atmosphere but yeah it's really exciting piece of information right so especially uh, coming here in india we have extreme shortage of oxygen so yeah uh, technology and science is progressing uh, you know drastically friends so we really have to appreciate it and you know it's better if you don't understand how it works to at least stop criticizing science and another curiosity driven uh, exciting news is a two damselfly species discovered in the western cuts and these species are in the genus uh, Euphia you know Euphia uh, tosigarensis and Euphia uh, pseudodispar uh, I think that these names are not named after the human beings. I'm always against it, naming the species after the human beings. So hopefully it's not. So yeah, very exciting piece of information, isn't it? And last month we also saw two, uh, you know, important uh, demises. Uh, the first one is astronaut Michael Collins, and he's the pilot of the Apollo 11 mission. You remember Apollo 11 is the very important mission in the space history. It happened in 1969 and uh, that landed on the moon you know first time humanity ever set foot on the moon uh, with the neil armstrong and buzz aldrin and uh, it's a three-man uh, you know mission and the pilot is uh, michael collins so some people call him as the the loneliest man ever lived on the planet earth you know because he was alone uh, when this uh, this two guys the, the armstrong and aldrin went on the moon you know and he was 90 years and by the way, you might know the PCR, the polymerase chain reaction. You might know what RT-PCR is, no? real-time PCR for the COVID-19 detection, isn't it? So PCR is the all credit goes to uh, the Carrie Mullis. He was the, the inventor of the PCR and who won the, no uh, the accolade 1993 uh, Nobel. And uh, he died in 2019, uh, a few years back, age 74 years. By the way, his discovery was uh, uh, due to just one important discovery that happened for the biodiversity by Thomas Brook. So Thomas Brook, no, not many people know him. So he is the one who discovered, uh, you know, the, the Thermus aquaticus the species in Yel Yellowstone uh, National Park, uh, the, the hot spring, the Yellowstone hot spring, you know. So this, this uh, uh, you know, the natural historian. And because of his key finding, the key discovery of this Thermus aquaticus, Carrie Mullis can able to get this PCR and uh, that pays uh, a big reward for all of us right now with the RT-PCR test, right? So Thomas Brock died, uh, aged 94 years, you know, so that, that also uh, happened in the last month. Coming to observances, what to be expected in uh, this month. So this is from my own bullet journal, uh, my own illustration, which is not really good. But yeah, this is the May illustration that I combined several of the observances together. You can see that here is uh, a legacy of my Antarctic trip, Antarctic voyage. You know, I was in Antarctica as part of Indian mission. And I saw the northern lights there. It's not really northern, it's southern light, Aurora uh, Australis. Northern light is called Aurora Borealis. It is called uh, Aurora uh, you know, Australis, the Southern Lights, right? So International Day of Light and B Day. I told you again and again, 20th is the B Day, and uh, of course, so you know, you can see that the Arctic Turn, my favorite uh, bird. You know, it's only 100 gram, friends. The Arctic Turn. Uh, do you know how much it can actually live? Uh, I mean, the Arctic Turn can live 30 years, and during its lifetime, it can go billions of kilometers, friends. So that kilometer is equivalent to three times a round trip to Mars from Earth. You can go to the moon and come back, not Mars, I'm sorry, it's moon. You can go to the moons and come back three times. So that much distance this Arctic turn can cover in its lifetime. Great, isn't it? So it, you know, as you can see in this illustration, uh, you know, there is a, there's a GPS tag. Yeah, so telecommunication day is also there. So third is World Press Freedom Day. By the way, all these observances are the UN uh, observances. Press Freedom Day. All around the world, uh, the media is getting hijacked with the political, uh, you know, uh, 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 conspiracy theorists. So they want to portray a propaganda of the politicians. So that is the big problem all around the world. You know, so yeah, uh, especially in the non-democratic countries like in China and um, North Korea, you know. So yeah, Press Freedom Day is really important. Eighth is World Migratory Birds Day, like Arctic Turn, you know, by World Migratory uh, Birds Day is 8th of May. 
16th is International Day of Light, you know. 17th is World Telecommunication and Information Society Day. And 20th is World B Day, you know. And 21st is International Tea Day, if you relish a cup of uh, hot tea, you know, kappa, like I do. And 22nd is the International Day for Biological Divers, the whole over uh, you know, uh, the world of biodiversity matters. So, you know, every episode of Curiosity do feature stories from the biodiversity. Yes, so biodiversity is really important. And coming to astronomy related observances, yes, so as you can see, the meteor shower, six to seven is Eta Aquarius meteor shower. So these two days are really good if you really want to see the Eta Aquarius. By the way, Eta Aquarius started last month, you know, April onwards. But six to seven is when this uh, meteor shower uh, peaks. Uh, by the way, this meteor, if you actually read about it, I really don't have time to speak a lot about it. But yeah, it's originating from Halley's Comet, you know, and this comet uh, comes uh, to Earth. I mean, we can see this comet once in 76, uh, 76 years, I guess. And it, this is one of the meteor. Another one is, uh, you know, the uh, uh, Orionids that happens in the month of September. So this is really interesting thing. And six to seven, the same days are really good to see the Earth shine nights. Earth shine night means that at night time you can see that uh, waning or waxing moons. Six to seven is basically waning moon. We just had a, a full moon, you know, the super moon. So during this time, the moon, if you look at the uh, the earth, uh, the, sh the shadow of the earth, you can see the other light of other side of the moon gets lightened because of the diffraction of light. And that is known as earth shine. So it's a fantastic time if you have a super zoom uh, you know, a uh, camera to capture uh, these craters on the lunar surface, you know. 17th is the moon, Mercury at the greatest eastern elongation. So it is the time you can really easily spot the Mercury if you have a zoom lens. So yeah, 17th is the day to, you know, to watch the Mercury. And uh, yeah, this is called the Earth shine, you know, this is, this is actually my own picture. You know, I have taken this picture last month. Uh, yes, yeah, so, uh, in April, uh, the end of April, I have taken this picture. You can see that these are craters. You can see these craters lighting up really nicely. And uh, yeah, of course, I'm going to take better pics this time. I'm waiting for, looking forward for six to seven. Uh, yeah, and I will share the pics in the uh, next episode of the Curiosity. And this is my own picture uh, in my park. It's a HDR photograph, you know, high dynamic range photography. And yes, uh, 26th of April was a super moon and 26th of May is yet another super moon. I'm looking forward to it. And this is the best super moon of 2021, you know, the best. So it's also known as flower moon. And another uh, interesting fact is that uh, for the May uh, super moon, that a flower moon that happens on 26th of the May, it's also total lunar eclipse. If you're lucky, you can see this lunar eclipse. Unfortunately, I'm not that lucky because right here in Punjab, <clears throat> you know, we will not see any uh, eclipse. But if you just get out of the Punjab where I live, for example, uh, Delhi or, uh, you know, down south in Kerala or, uh, you know, Uttar Pradesh, yeah, you can see partly the penumbral side of the eclipse. And of course, if you are in any of these regions, like in Australia or in, uh, you know, Pacific, you can see the complete eclipse or in Antarctic also, you can see that full eclipse, you know, but here in India, it's only partial eclipse is visible. Coming to opportunities, uh, yes, uh, we have uh, several international fellowship for the students uh, opening up in uh, this month. May 16th is the deadline for MEXT scholarship. By the way, I'm the proud alumni of this MEXT. MEXT is the Japanese government prestigious scholarship and it also pays out very handsome fee, um, uh, the, the scholarship. And it's completely free. I mean, you know, they sponsor your tickets and also you don't have to pay any tuition fee, you know, and they even give you money on landing. You know, I still remember when I landed uh, my first international flight was Bombay to uh, Tokyo and they paid you money on when you arrive it. They don't even expect that you carry any pocket money, you know, a free stay. Fantastic. Go, please apply for this scholarship next. And it's also for the research as well as graduate student. You can pursue your BSc or MSc there, you know. And Fulbright Nehru Master's Fellowship for, uh, uh, you know, <coughs> uh, Fulbright Scholarship. This is for the US, you know. 17th May is the deadline. 
Asian Elephant Conservation Fund uh, financial year 2021 is also open. Uh, this is for the grant. You know, if you're a faculty or a scientist, you can apply for the, the conservation of the elephants and rhinoceros and tiger. Uh, all these are open right now. DST India, Sweden Collaborative Industrial Research and Developmental Program, Smart Grid, uh, 20th May is the deadline. Department of State U.S. Mission to the India Ocean Matters, Safeguarding Ocean Health in Indo-Pacific, 18th May, uh, 2021 is the deadline. And UICC Global Cancer Control Young Leaders Program, 23rd May. By the way, all the links are in the show notes, you know, in the Curiosities website. You can check it out. You can access all these things. Otherwise, you can search it out as well, you know. UICC, I already told you. Welcome Trust Innovator Award, 24th May is the deadline. CEPI Complementary Clinical Trials, Expanding Access to the COVID-19 Vaccines and Rapid Response to the Clinical Development Gaps. 28th May is the deadline. And uh, yes, the several grants open. DST Gita India Israel is open. Uh, DST Gita into Sweden Collaborative is also open. UNDP Ocean Innovation Challenge or HBCSE of the TIFR, very prestigious institute in, uh, in Mumbai. PhD application is open. If you are interested in science communication, please do apply. 5th May is the deadline. Hindustan Liver Limited with AGNLI Startup India's Grand Water Saving Challenge. Grand Water Saving Challenge is open 25th May is the deadline. Uh, yeah, you know, of course, this company has been criticized for, uh, uh, you know, uh, extracting the water, uh, exploiting the water resources, right? Hindustan Liver. So maybe it's uh, they are spending to, you know, compensate for the you know the unethical practice that they did it but anyway it's laudable effort department of state u.s mission to india space uh, technology the next business frontier 18th may is a deadline and nih i told you the bidden uh, increased drastically the nih fund the several schemes open friends aging or uh, a neurogenesis you know or a curiosity driven uh, uh, research, you know, a brain initiative, research, ethics and education, innovation on tuberculosis, global food safety, all these deadlines, please check it out, the curiosity is show notes, right? Uh, yeah, you can apply for these NIH grants. So thanks for watching this episodes of the curiosity and I hope this is uh, uh, useful to you, you know, and uh, it has been, uh, yeah, I mean, why not, you know, so I look forward to see you all in the next month's episode of the curiosity that is coming up in in the month of uh, June, you know, and the opportunity section, please check out our sh the show notes, right? Uh, you will see all the, uh, the links, relevant links for it. And uh, before going, I really have one request to you. Please take care and please do not trust fake news and conspiracy theories and hoaxes and pseudoscience. Friends, we have only three weapons to fight. COVID-19. Weapon number one is physical distancing. I, I hate to say a social distancing. It's not social. It's a physical distancing. You know, two meter physical distance should be maintained. Number two is mask. Of course, better to take both together, you know. And we have the third uh, weapon against COVID-19 now, vaccine. Distrust all the uh, anti-vaccine campaigns and anti-vaccine uh, posts in the Facebook or uh, WhatsApp friends vaccine saves you know vaccine is saving the lives in new zealand and uh, israel and here in india also we really have to trust the vaccine you know and we really need to get the jab whatever vaccine be uh, get it please get a, a vaccine shot and the three are really really important and it's better to take all the three together even after vaccination wear the mask and uh, you know observe the physical distancing and please take care of yourself and if you can, please take care of someone else too. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Goodbye.